Ukuma Media's Polity I'm Tabi Shomulikai. Joining me today is researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Satna, here to speak about From Government of National Unity to National Dialogue and Beyond, Part 2. Welcome, Raymond. Thank you. Why do you devote so much attention to the tribe or tribalism in the context of national unity? If a national dialogue is one of the key reasons for having it is to build unity towards building one nation, one of the factors as a, which is raised very often as a barrier is the, no, the, the tribe, that tri tribalism is antagonistic to unity. Now, what I believe is necessary is that we must understand that unity does not mean that we all become one. Unity means that we unite different peoples as one for certain purposes, but when they're outside the unity, they go back to being uh, housewives, lawyers, doctors, teachers, workers, etc. Just as people may go to church, but when they go back to their village, they deal with certain customs, which some people will call tribalism. My position is Unity uh, is not and it's not antagonistic to unity to practice customs and respect cultures as long as these do not undermine the well-being of any people. And I gave the example of Ugutwala, which is really the rape of a woman to try and force her into a marriage. Now that's not a custom we have to respect. I don't agree with this idea that everything that comes from the past must simply be retrieved and applied and abided by. When I say that we respect these cultures or customs that may be part of tribalism, I'm meaning uh, we respect them and then we examine them. We ask, what does it mean today, given that we have a constitution with certain values. Some of these customs and some of what is called tribalism uh, conflicts with the constitution and human rights, then we must oppose it or declare it illegal in the case of Ugu Twala. I think it is illegal, but it's still happening. Why do you distinguish between recognizing customs and cultures and interrogating their meaning? And why are you critical of them being retrieved and honoured? There is a process of decolonizing education. And in the process of decolonization, when I was at UJ for a couple of years, a lot of people were talking about retrieving customs, retrieving history and customs and cultures, and as if that could just go into a book and be recorded, it was oral, now we make it into the written word. But that's what's called essentialism, to adopt customs as if their purity is something that has to be respected and must remain as that. Now, my belief, as I said in the answer to the previous question, is that Every single custom, whether it comes from, from so-called tribalism or from Western Europe, must be open to question. Because a lot of things from Western Europe, like banning abortion or uh, the death penalty, we have already uh, abolished in South Africa. So uh, we don't just take the past as worthy of unqualified respect. We respect it as history, and then we look at it and we examine it according to the values that we have now. And your notion of unity is very theoretical. So what is wrong with suggesting that all identities should feed into a national identity? And can you explain the relationship between unity and distinct identities? 
the notion that all identities are valid only if they feed into the national unity creates a hierarchy. I am a South African. I am also a, a non-believing South African. I'm, in the sense, I'm an atheist, but and I come from a Jewish background. Now I don't practice. Let's say if I were a Christian, okay. If I practice that Christianity, that Christianity is not subordinate to my being a South African. They engage with one another as equals. It just happens the nation is a bigger phenomenon which brings together everyone. However, it it's not a hierarchy that everything that you believe in your religion must be feed into the national. It mustn't be in conflict with national legislation or the constitution or things like that. But that doesn't mean that the identity of being a South African is superior to the identity of being a woman, being a Muslim, whatever it happens to be. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's Polity about government of national unity to national dialogue and beyond. Part two.